obsessing over what a good job he's doing when it's plain to see he's doing an awful job, dreadful job. And uh, the future looks bleak if we don't come to our senses. And it might not even... Even if he, if he wins this Europa League and we think, all right, we're going to give him another 12 months, he can stay, we're going to give him some money to invest. The very minimum that should happen is they take the title of manager off him, make him head coach again, and bring in a proper director of football that can take us forward with joined up thinking. Uh, that's the very minimum that should happen. It's not going to happen though, George. I mean, you know, no, he's, he's, not happen. he's no, hitched, they, 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 he has hitched his star to the crankies. And that's what, what I, you know, he's. <laughs> He's, he's subjugated his football decisions now to the, the dicta dictates of the crankies. That's part of the problem. That's part of, of the opportunism. It. That's part of the opportunism that I've, I've seen in Mikkel. And, you know, they are not going to take that away from him because he's been rewarded. And um, so, you're, you know, I think, you're, you know, God help us if we, if we don't get to that European League. And even if we get there, George... We're probably going to meet well, Manchester, Manchester United in the final. If we don't win it, yes. and God help us if we do. <laughs> yeah. Because we, winning it winning it solves some problems, but creates a whole lot of new problems. Right. And I don't know. I you know, and that is a that is a problem when you are in a, when a club gets into that kind of decline. When, and when I say decline, they are they are trotting a path which is downwards, but they are they are trying to find ways to you know make keep. Uh, it's it's like trying to go up, but the escalator is going down. You, you see what I mean, George? I know exactly what you mean. And that yeah. is the problem at Arsenal. It's like you are tr you're tr you're mightily trying to go up, but the escalator because of the the tactics, the leadership, and the strategy is taking you down. How do you go against it? I've seen clubs. They, 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 they hang around and then eventually they just fall off a cliff. <laughs> I hope that doesn't happen to us. Well, I, it, it all comes back down to it. Yes. The answer is, and the only answer, greater investment. Yes. And that's not going to happen. We know that's not. We cannot compete. There's four clubs above us that we simply cannot compete with financially. And because of that, in the long term, we might have one year where one of them plays badly and you can nip past them and yes. get in, get a position higher up. But in the long term, unless they employ really bad managers, and why would they do that when they've every manager available to them? Uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna catch them and you're not gonna pass them. Uh, or or George, unless you employ a very good manager. Yeah, but even even playing a, a very good manager, like I say, in part, let's say Bielsa, uh, employ him, and you're still not going to pass them. You're going to pass the ones that you shouldn't be passed. Yes, <laughs> well, obviously. You know, you're going to pass West Ham. You're going to pass Ever Aston Villa. Yes. You're going to pass Everton. Yes. But you know, and, and Spurs, and Spurs, George, City. and Spurs. Chelsea. Don't leave them out. And Spurs. <laughs> Yeah, right. you should be able to pass them, yes. but you're not going to pass Manchester City, Chelsea, Manchester United, Liverpool. That's you're not going to catch them and you're not going to pass them. Unless they have a bad year. Unless they have a bad year. But I mean long-term, right. sustainable. You look, really, I said this before, at the beginning of the season, if you were to predict your top four, you know, without your Arsenal hat on, yeah. You know, I'm just trying to sneak them in somewhere out of loyalty. If you were to predict the top four, you would predict it in terms of ability to spend every single year. Manchester City would be top, Chelsea would be second, Manchester United would be third, and Liverpool would be fourth. That would be your running order because that's their spending power. City have the most, Chelsea have the second most. United have a third, Liverpool have the fourth. Every single year, that's your running order before the season starts. It's not the manager, it's not the board, 
it's the amount that you can spend, their ability to spend. That's how it is. And that's how it is in every league. You look, go over to France. PSG. PSG. Why? Because they can spend the most. You've got, you go to uh, Italy. It's Juventus it's win it Juventus. almost every year. They're not, not won it this year. It's a blip. Yes. But because they can outspend other clubs, they'll soon regain it. Yes. Manchester in La Liga, you've got Barcelona. three of them yes. at the top. Uh, not La Liga. La Liga. Yeah, La Liga. Yes, yes, correct. You, you've got three of them at the top. And uh, the running order is Barca, Madrid, Real, and, Atletico. and Atletico. Because that's the spending power of each. And that's the running order every year, every single year. That's what you expect the order to be. And in Germany, it's, it's just Bayern. In Germany, it's Bayern Munich and, <laughs> and Dortmund. Uh, Dortmund but it's, <laughs> also runs. And, and that's it. Year in, year out. Is it because they have better managers? Is it because they have more fans? No, it's because they can spend more and they do spend more. And it's as simple as that. And if we don't outspend the four above us, which we won't, we shouldn't expect to finish above them in the league. We can hope, have a good year, a freak year, a West Ham of a year. A Leicester That's year. It. A Leicester year. A Leicester year. Yeah. But you would need the referees to join in and help you with that one. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, That, and that's it. You, you know, look, look at next season. Like, just look at next season. How do you expect the league to look at the end of next season? Well, well George, you, I expect it. That has I to be the... City to win it. I expect Chelsea to be second. I expect United to be third, and I expect Liverpool to be fourth. That's how I expect it to happen next season. Why is that? Because it's a reflection of the spending power, George. That's, you know, for that being so optimistic and that with a dose of realism, I think we should bring this to a close and say, you know, all that realism for our next podcast. <laughs> and say, yeah, and, and everybody can say to me, I mean, listen to it, go fuck yourself, George. <laughs> I didn't want to hear that. I didn't want to hear that. I do not want to hear those things on a podcast. I shall never darken your doors again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure there are people like that. Well, thank you very much, George. Uh, okay, it's been mate. a real pleasure. And I hope people, you know, at least can retain some sanity, you know, sanity in this era of football madness. Thank you very much, my friend. See ya. See ya. Bye. This concludes another edition of the Positively Uncensored Arsenal podcast. Show your appreciation of our podcast by subscribing and clicking the like button wherever you listen. This really helps in growing our support among honest and biased fans who recognize that Wenger's legacy is fundamental. Free-flowing attacking football by a club with integrity and class. Thanks for listening.